This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, continues to spread. And with no cure or vaccine in sight, campaigns to stop the epidemic link HIV-positive people to care and treatment and try to keep others negative. There's always going to be a role and a need for protection of people who are HIV uninfected. And despite these really Herculean efforts with condoms and condom education and education of communities about HIV risk, we're still having a stable number of new HIV infections in the United States every year. Our fastest growing group are adolescents. Uh, half of them get infected after they're kicked out of their homes because their mothers can't deal with their sexuality. Uh, again, most of them are men having sex with men. The CDC estimates that there's 50,000 new infections a year in the United States, and we probably account for at least 10% of that, maybe we're a little bit more. And we estimate that about a quarter of people don't even know they're HIV infected. And uh, they're the people that probably are transmitting HIV to others unknowingly. Clearly, we need something more. And it was really out of that observation that PrEP was born. PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. People take a medication before they are at risk for being exposed to HIV in case they're exposed to HIV to prevent them from getting HIV. For people to understand PrEP, if I am going to Africa or South America, I'm going to take medicine to keep from getting malaria. That's PrEP. If my goddaughter, who's my heart, came and tell me I'm going to be sexually active, I'm going to give her a birth control pill, that's a PrEP. So PrEP is nothing unique to HIV. It's just that now with the advances in medicine, we're not able to use PrEP in HIV. Most people have a, a window of, of high risk for becoming infected with HIV, and generally it starts in the late teens through the early, mid-20s. Some of these slides that were George familiar. Lemp runs the California HIV AIDS Research Program at the University of California. And his office is funding three PrEP demonstration projects, targeting those at high risk in Oakland, Los Angeles, and San Diego. What we're trying to do is provide a, uh, a prevention approach that they can take and prevent the possibility of becoming infected during this very high risk window so that uh, we can really impact the epidemic uh, significantly. In our particular study right now, we're looking for men who have sex with men or transgender uh, male to females. We know men who have sex with men are the biggest proportion of people that are getting infected in California. So we started with this very high risk group. I would say I'm mid to high, absolutely. I think um, anyone in the community at any point, I'm partnered, but my partner and I tend to be a little playful um, with other couples and whatnot, and you can never be too safe. Coming out of the closet and being thrown into this type of um, lifestyle or scene, as I would call it, you know, the gay scene, um, everybody that you, you meet, it's always a, a chance. There's always a, a factor that you, you know, you either drink too much or you put yourself in a situation where you're uh, unsafe or you're not, you're not where you want to be or things like that happen. And I've experienced that in any kind of way. So I think just having this as a tool to protect myself, I think that's even more powerful than anything else. The only medication that's currently FDA approved for PrEP is tenofovir or emtricitabine, available as a fixed-dose combination tablet called Truvada. It's taken every day, and it's part of a cocktail of medications that somebody who was already HIV-infected might take. It would be taken in combination with at least one other medication if you were HIV-positive already. The idea of this medication is to render HIV 
unable to set up an infection when it comes in contact with a host. So viruses are never alive, so they can't be killed. I think of them as robots. And the way Truvada works is it's a monkey wrench that gets thrown into the gears of the robot that is HIV. And if there are small amounts of HIV that have gotten into a body, it prevents it from reproducing itself and setting up a durable infection in the person who is exposed to HIV. Folks that enroll in our study is a commitment on their part. Of course, the most important thing for them to protect themselves from HIV is to take the PrEP medicine. We're gonna go in, here. in addition, we give them counseling about safe sex practices besides taking PrEP, and they have to have routine safety labs to make sure there are no side effects from the medicine. One of the things I think that's unique about this study is that typically in all my 16 years, well, actually, within HIV, it's been over almost 30 years now. I've been doing this since 86. Um, has always been people who are positive. And so most of that energy has been around, you're not going to die. This is how your meds are going to be. Now this is before the fork in the road, and this is where people actually cannot get HIV if they actually you know, play an active role in their own health. Very good, yay. Normal? Normal. Bonus. The good thing about the fact that it's a study is that it doesn't cost the participant anything to be involved. The medication is free, the laboratory testing is free, all of the clinical visits they see with our uh, nurse and physicians are all free. And they get a small amount of money to help them travel here to get here for all these uh, visits. But, as these HIV AIDS researchers will tell you, PrEP works only if you consistently take the medicine. Well, adherence is a critical issue for uh, the uh, PrEP studies, because what we found internationally is that in the studies that had uh, a lack of good adherence to the drug, then the studies and the you know, PrEP failed. When the first clinical trial of PrEP, the IPREX study, was released in 2010, the initial report estimated the efficacy of this daily pill at 44%. And I think a lot of people were very disappointed in that number. A closer read of the data, though, led to a different conclusion. When the investigators from IPREX went a step further and looked at who had actually any measurable drug in their system, the results were remarkable. Anyone who had any evidence of any drug in their system in the last two weeks had about 90% efficacy. So what it really shows us is something that in retrospect shouldn't have been a surprise. If you don't take the medication, it can't work for you. Like anything in life, particularly if you don't have uh, symptoms of a disease, taking a medicine daily, even if it has almost no side effects, is hard to do. And so our study is looking at a novel intervention to help people be more adherent to their therapy. That novel intervention is about influencing behavior by communicating through texts. The trial is set up such that it has two arms. Um, one arm gets daily text messages to remind them to take their medications. And then the other arm just gets standard of care. So they get traditional risk reduction counseling um, and they get prep, but they don't get the reminders to take their medications. I do, and it's been incredibly helpful for me. There are days where I wake up late and I'm running a little late and you know whatever the case may be and I jump in the shower and I'm getting ready to go and I come back to my phone and there's a text message there, hey idiot, take your medication. Um, so I take it and I'm out the door. So the personalization is what helps. Now whether or not this will truly help our subjects be more adherent to their medicine is what we're trying to determine here. And if it is, it's a relatively low cost way of using something that virtually everybody has. That is a phone that can get text messages. Other methods to increase adherence are being tried at two study sites in Los Angeles, at the Oasis Clinic in Watts and at the Gay and Lesbian Center in Hollywood. We're not only measuring the amount of tenofovir and emtricitabine in the blood in real time, um, which really tells us only about dosing in the last 48 hours or so. We're collecting dried blood spots and doing intraerythrocytic drug levels, which measures tenofovir and emtricitabine metabolite levels in red blood cells, which last for three to four months. But what neither of those technologies tells us um, is whether somebody took 
a pill every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where they took it not at all for a while and then took it every day for the last half of the interval. So we've introduced MEMS caps in about a third of our participants. It's a special bottle cap for the medication that records opening events. Every time somebody opens the bottle, the cap records that opening event, and then when they bring their bottle back in, we download that information and get a sense about the patterns of people's adherence. These PrEP demonstration projects will continue for another three years as the CHRP researchers recruit more participants to spread the word about preparing for HIV. People are sexually active. That's a given. We need to argue that. And if you get syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, it means you've done something that you could have also gotten HIV. And again, I, I cannot change those habits. So you at least need to know there are things you can do to hopefully protect yourself from getting a disease that's going to change your whole life for the rest of your life. Most people, when I tell them I'm on Truvada, you know, the reason being my partner's, you know, HIV positive, they understand it makes sense. Um, they, um, they get that I want that extra security for our relationship and, and for myself, so I don't pick anything up. I really think it's important what we're doing here as part of the study because there's still such a stigma with HIV, even in the gay community. And I know friendships that have ended over people who have become positive. I know relationships that have ended over one partner becoming positive or not. And it's such a sad state of mind to me that people still live in such fear of this virus. If a friend would approach me to, uh, for some advice about PrEP, um, I would tell them that it's something that if they have the ability to do and take, I think they they should. Um, again, with the same notion that it's not a bareback pill and it's not a you know free for all pill. But if this is available and taking it one pill a day, it does make wonders for you to feel a little bit safer. But then again, keep that notion of being safe um, by yourself with yourself. Which arm would you like me to try? Doesn't matter to me. Now that we're 30 years into the epidemic, it's really time to provide an intervention for people who are at high risk that can help them reduce their chance of infection, and reduce the chance of infection to others. Certainly we care about those who are HIV infected and they have access to treatment, but we're, we think that if we uh, provide this intervention at this point in time, we can uh, forever alter the course of HIV AIDS in California.